Hi everyone, I'm Dawn. Welcome to my channel. Thank you for visiting with me today. So today we are going to um, visit a portion of Sienna May's um, medium blog that she wrote, the essay she wrote with um, about turning 18 and um, her apology in it. And I wanted to point out that it was a very me-centric, not me-me, but you know, Sienna-centric essay. And which it should be, because most of it was about her experience turning 18, I think. And she used me terms, you know, I, I, I'm, myself, mine. She used those types of terms 228 times. And I'm not counting the times it was intended. And uh, I don't know, I think that's telling. It may not be a big deal to you at all, but I think that's very telling when someone is trying to be sincere but it's all about them. And I'm sorry, the situation involves her, but it's not about her. It's about the person she allegedly victimized. And um, I just, I find him trustworthy. In his video he made, I just, you just can't fake that kind of emotion. And maybe being a victim myself, I'm, I'm gonna say survivor um, myself. Maybe I feel connected to that in some kind of way. I don't know. I don't know. But um, but yeah, she used 228 me terms, not counting the ones that were parts of quotes or very specific to, to her that, that there was no other choice but to use that. Very me-centric essay. But I just wanted to talk about the the portion where she apologizes to Jack. So we're gonna, I'm gonna read that whole portion to you first, and I'm gonna try not to interrupt myself, and then I'll get into the discussion. We'll break it down in the discussion. Okay, so Jack, if you are reading this, I apologize if there were times that I made you feel uncomfortable. I am sorry if anything I ever did triggered other things you have experienced or any feelings of discomfort. But anything I did, I did unknowingly. As our physical relationship on camera was one of closeness and familiarity that I had known to carry into our real lives. That said, there is a distinct line between that and SA. I'm so sad that this is where we ended up and even more so that I'm now being used in a new and even more hurtful way. So I have comments. No, really, you have comments? So I have some things to say. I have my notes here, of course, but it's only two pages of notes. It shouldn't be too bad. So I wanna to touch on the part, Jack, if you're reading this, I apologize if, she uses the word if, which cringes me in an apology. There were times that I made you feel uncomfortable. I apologize if there were times that I made you feel uncomfortable. Using if makes it worthless. It, it is. It's. You don't use ifs in apologies. When you use words like if and but, you're not taking accountability. You're saying, oh, well, let's just apologize, but you know, I didn't do anything. You know what I mean? You're trying to shift the blame to the victim. You're trying to say, okay, it's your, you're responsible for your feelings, but I'm gonna just go ahead and tell you this, but I want you to know you're the one responsible. Um, you know, it tr they try to put responsibility on the victim and it, it's saying it's your fault. You know, you, you, you felt that way. It's your fault. You felt that way because I did nothing wrong and it's your fault. You took it the wrong way. That one little two letter word can be very manipulative and that's its intent to be manipulative. I'm going to use if, because if I don't use if, I'm admitting guilt and I'm not guilty of anything. They're guilty of feeling. You know what I'm saying? Um, an apology using ifs is, is kind of gaslighting because its intent is to make the, the person they're apologizing to think that, well, maybe it was me. Maybe I did something wrong or misunderstood something. Let me think about this. What did I do? It, it's attempting to make the victim question themselves. Is it my fault? A real sincere apology will not contain if. It just won't ever, 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 okay? So now I wanna move on to, I am sorry if anything I ever did triggered other things you have experienced or any feelings of discomfort. 
I really hate this part. I mean, I hate the whole thing, but I really hate this part because, okay, so I'm going to repeat that. I am sorry if anything I ever did triggered other things you have experienced or any feelings of discomfort. Obviously, I have a problem with the word, word if, but I also have a problem with the use of the word triggered. Do you know why? Think about it for a minute, why I would have a problem with the way she used the word triggered. You can pause if you want to, but I'm going to continue. First, that if again. There's that if again, you know. And she said, sorry if I triggered you. Using triggered is saying she didn't cause the trauma, but that she may have innocently done something that triggered a memory of a traumatic event, not accepting that she was allegedly the cause of the trauma. You know, she didn't. He, his reaction wasn't to the trauma. It was a trigger to some other trauma. You know what I'm saying? And no, it, you didn't trigger him. You put him in a situation to now in the future, something like what you did, though uh, it may be consensual, might trigger him. You know? Again, I'm saying alleged all over. And then, but... Anything I did, I did unknowingly, but there's that big but again. Well, no, not again. It, it, the but and if are basically the same thing. It means the same thing in apology as in what it does to the apology. Um, she used but, another term used to shift responsibility. But is saying, it's not my fault. I did nothing wrong. I didn't knowingly do anything wrong, so I'm not responsible for your feelings. Using but and if invalidates an apology. It makes it, it, it like you hear me say, it makes it an unpology. And suggests the thing never happened and they're making a minimized, insincere apology. It just oozes of, let's just get this done. Let's get this done and move on. And... You know, I apologize, call off the hate or whatever. Because that's what I think it was for. It was to get the hate off of her. And, um, which I don't think people should be going and, 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 and you know, being nasty to her. I, th I, I really think that from this point on or from that point on, they should just be dealing with this off, you know, offline. If the, anybody's dealing with it anymore at all, they may just be. Like, okay, this is over, we're over, the truth is out, and every word I, Jack, said is true. I mean, that's what Jack said, every word of what I said was true, and I'm at peace with that. Uh, he may need to get therapy, you know, I don't know what they're doing in that avenue, but uh, it may not go any further than this, you know, I don't know if, I mean, he has time to press charges if he wanted to, but um, I don't know that he will. Because he and his family, and I'm not saying they do this, but they may also have the girl-boy thing. Like, well, she's a girl, you know. Hopefully, no one, well, her, her, his brother doesn't, that's for sure. And he doesn't either. But, you know, you just don't know how people feel about the situation and how they're going to go about it. Um, It would be uh, nice to be able to say, well, this all happened so she won't ever do it again. It, she lacks the understanding of what she even did. So, you know, she probably, if given the opportunity, she probably would do it again, allegedly. Um, that said, she used that said, that's another invalidator. That saying, that said, now I'm going to talk a bunch of stuff that um, clears me of any wrongdoing. You know, saying that said. She said, let me read that again. That said, there is a distinct line between that and sexual. Or There is a distinct line. That said, there is a distinct line between that and SA. There isn't. Um, in my understanding of what happened and what she's partially kind of sort of not really admitting happened there's no different um if someone rubs your shoulders and you don't want them to that could be essay someone touches you and you don't want them to touch you that's an 
A, you know? Not necessarily an essay, but it's an A. Um, so anyway, that said is another invalidator. There's a, um, and oh, and then she said, I'm so sad that this is where we ended up and even more so that I'm not being used, that I'm now being used in a new and even more hurtful way. She said, I'm so sad. I'm so sad, making it completely about her. I'm being used. These terms are used to make the apologizer look like the or a victim. She also used a lot of unnecessary words and justifications. Those are used to pad the apology, crowd the apology, hide anything that might be construed as an admission of guilt to hide it and also to confuse the reader or listener. You know what I'm saying? And if I was the one receiving this apology, I'd wonder what the motives of this person really are because it went into these I statements immediately. I'm so sad that this is where we ended up and even more so that I'm now being used in a new and even more hurtful way. I need that explained to me. What does she mean by that? How is she being used? She's trying to pad the, apo the apologetic portion of this essay. And I don't know, I feel like it fell flat. Um, I, I know she's 18, she's very young, but I was 18. I knew 18 year old boys and girls and that line was never crossed, you know? Um, and we understood consent. It wasn't taught in school. We didn't learn about consent in school. We just, we knew the difference between a good touch and a bad touch. And if we didn't want anyone putting their hands on us, they were not to. Um, so I don't really, I don't know. I don't, I don't fully buy it. So, uh, and, uh, I don't want to treat her like, act like I'm treating her with kid gloves because she's a girl or she's an 18 year, year old. Age is not an excuse. There's 14 year olds who are, um, were tried as adults and are in prison for SA. So, you know, age isn't an excuse to do things like that because it wasn't, a stupid thing. It was a crime. It was a criminal thing. And uh, I don't think she's either fully getting that. She's having a hard time seeing what she allegedly did or understanding what the problem really was and what Jack's expressing. But I think that um, maybe some time will pass and she'll accept it and she'll handle it, you know, with Jack or with Jack's family, you know, and truly apologize if she did do it. Cause you know, it's a, he said, she said, but I found him very believable. And I, you know, I just, I saw that video too. And to me, it looked very squirrely. I watched it very closely. I slowed it down. I zoomed in. I, I didn't like it. So, and that was just one incident there apparently were multiple incidences and allegedly and so yeah that's it uh if you like th this type of discussion let me know because i can talk about this type of thing all day long um uh i majored in public relations with a, with an emphasis on crisis communications when i was in college and a good pr rep would have never let her publish this the way it was written never 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 and that's the thing I've noticed. These YouTubers here are like, well, this is my PR rep. And it's just some, some friend that, I mean, there is, um, they think PR is easy. True PR, good, real PR isn't this whole just, oh, hi, everybody. We're going to get everybody in. Just be patient. That's not PR. You need representation, people that can write clearly, concise, concisely. And, you know, and that's just one area of it, writing you know, it's not crowd control. So anyway, that's it. Thanks so much for watching. I will talk to everyone later. Bye.